get started on hands and knees. If your wrists are not going to have any of it, set yourself up with your forearms on blocks or stacks of books. So forearms and knees is also an option, but give yourself that little bit of height. You'll get a little draw up of belly button towards your spine. Support there. And as you inhale, begin to float your left leg up behind you. You'll bend and straighten that leg. Release your left leg to the floor. Slowly bring your right leg up. You want your booty doing some of that work. Reach it back behind you and down to the floor. Same thing, second side, you want your glutes doing that lifting. Get the lift up, bend the knee, release it down. Try to move really slowly as you go back and forth here. Almost like you're trying to push through something rather than just being moving through the air. I want to have that imaginary resistance. So that you're getting your hamstrings and your glutes, the backs of your thigh and your butt doing some of that work. So keep switching side to side. The next time after you release your right leg down, we'll begin to move in your cat cow. So as you inhale, head and tailbone reach away from each other, exhale to round, and hips sink back towards your heels, child's posture. You can rock your head and your hips side to side a few times. You'll come back up to hands and knees, or again, forearms and knees. Step your left foot out towards the left. It could be on knuckles if that makes more sense for you. And you'll slowly begin to lift your left foot off the floor and lower it back down. Outer hip is doing that work. And you're not just shifting your hips to the right to get your leg up. It's outer hip action might not be a big lift, that's fine. Keep that support around your midsection. Only go as far as you can go while using your outer hip, not changing the position of your hips entirely. If it's feeling like too much to have that leg extended, you can do it with knee bent, same action. It'll make it a little bit more manageable since you won't have all of that length that you're working with, the whole leg. So that's side one, hips to heels. Take a child's pose for a moment. And you'll switch to the other side. I'm going to spin around because the wall's right there. You don't have to. Step your right foot out towards the right. Again, you're keeping your hips basically as they are and using your outer hip to lift your right foot up off the floor. Doesn't need to be a big movement. You can always bend your knee. It'll change the range of motion a little bit because you won't have the floor fucking. That outer hip is what's doing the work. So partially the glutes or some of the glutes, gluteus and medius and minimus specifically. So you do that lifting and lowering, right foot comes down, hips towards heels, take a little movement side to side. Your head might rest on the floor, it might not. Do a little rocking side to side. Rock your head, rock your hips, rock your shoulders. And you'll return to hands and knees. From hands and knees, forearms to the floor. Give your upper arms a hug. Interlace your fingers. Take a few rounds of cat cow here. You arch and round your spine with your breath. As so you're ready, tuck toes. Lift hips. So your knees could remain bent. And your feet could be as wide apart as your mat. It gives a little extra room for your hamstrings, the backs of your thighs. You'll alternate knee bends, move with your breath. Knees come down to the floor, hips towards heels. You'll inhale to lift up and step yourself to a forward fold. And come all the way up to standing. So you'll take your blanket or towel off your mat if you've got hardwood floors. If you don't, you might choose to put paper plates or plastic plates down instead. I'm refolding my mat because of room. You don't necessarily have to. You want to be able to stand on your mat and slide your feet all the way back to a plank. So inhale, reach your hands up. You'll be standing on your mat. As you exhale, sink your hips back for chair. 
And you might play around with grabbing a block or book and put that in between your thighs so that you can feel like it's squeezing back. So inhale, reach your arms up, get that nice squeeze against your block or book, feel belly button draw just a little bit towards your spine. Exhale to fold. Take the block or book out from in between your thighs. Step your right toes onto your blanket. You'll slide your right leg back to come to a lunge. So you want to imagine that your inner thighs are still squeezing against that block. It's a weirdly shaped block now. Block nonetheless. Press down with your left heel. Feel that squeeze in so your right leg just doesn't take you out into a split. You'll slide that foot forward. Step onto your mat. Inhale to sweep arms up as you exhale, fold. Again, finger block in between your thighs. Fingertips lift towards the ceiling for chair. Sink your hips back. Release your hands down, your block down. Step left foot onto your blanket and slide that back to set up for your lunge. Press your right heel down. Imagine your inner thighs squeezing towards each other onto a weirdly shaped block. You might still feel that sensation of the block against your inner thighs. Lift up to your lunge. Feel that work that's happening around your hips. Slide your left foot forward. Come to standing on your mat. A moment to pause. You'll release fingertips to the floor. Step right foot onto your blanket. And you'll spin that heel down to the floor. I'm going to feel your left hip pull back. So your glutes are starting to do some work and you see that change the position of my knee. That's important. You just want your knee dropping in. You'll lift your arms up to warrior two. If you had left forearm and left thigh and that was feeling like plenty, you might hang out there. Feeling the draw down, almost like you're tucking your left sits bone under slightly. You'll slide right foot forward to join your left. Step onto your mat. Left foot comes back. Spin that heel down onto the blanket. You'll slide your foot back. Right hand up to your right thigh. Pull that right hip back. Start with right forearm and right thigh. And keep feeling that little spin of your hips. Reach left arm alongside your left ear. And possibly come up to warrior two. If you're feeling stable. Otherwise, you could stay right there. Right forearm on your thigh. Left arm behind your back. Take a few breaths in side angle. Same leg position. You're still getting that work for your hips. And step your way onto your mat. Take a little shake out. You might do a little dance. And play whatever music will help you dance. Dance party now. And if you fold it up your mat, you'll stretch it back out. And now the fun begins. Come to standing on your mat. Take an inhale. Sweep your arms up. Fold. You can have your feet as wide apart as your mat. Let your hips move a little bit from side to side. Maybe grab opposite elbows. You'll know, place your hands down on blocks, perhaps, as you do this to make the floor a little closer to you. And let yourself get a little movement around the hips. Step your feet about hip width apart and a halfway lift on an inhale. You can bend your knees to sink your hips for chair. Pick up your right foot and hook right knee behind left. So you're holding that bent knee, you're breathing, you're feeling that little lift up of your belly button towards your spine. You might keep your hands down. You might reach your arms alongside your ears. You'll see how your balance is going right now, right here. Release. Give your legs a little shake out. And get ready for side number two. This time you pick your left foot up, hook left knee behind right knee. So you're kind of pressing that knee against your calf. And feel that draw up. Maybe you lift your arms. Maybe there's plenty of strengthening going on your hips with your hands down and your balance. That's where you're going to be. That's fine. Great. Release your left foot to the floor. Give your hips a little wiggle, a little movement. Now, if you are feeling like balance wasn't challenging enough and you want to check it out a little bit more, push it a little harder, you could set yourself up a little tower to stand on. Again, you'll bend both knees, right knee behind left knee. Might be a little more interesting, especially if you're using foam blocks. There's a little more play there. Maybe you reach your arms alongside your ears. You breathe. 
if you're doing nothing else you breathe. It doesn't matter if you're taking the variation on your blocks on the floor, if your hands are down, you breathe. That is the most important thing that you can be doing. You're ready to play on the other side. Again, this time it'll be right knee bent. Maybe you're up on blocks, maybe you're not. You can always take that first variation. Left knee hooks behind right knee. Maybe you reach your arms up. You breathe. Take a few breaths here. Release your weight down. Give your hips a little wiggle. You might do a little shake out. You'll step your feet out to a upside down V-shape. Hands on your blocks or books. You'll start to shift your weight from side to side. Move with your breath. So you bend right knee, shift, shift hips towards the right. Bend left knee, shift hips towards the left. You don't want your knee popping forward. I'm going to keep your bottom pressing back. Say your knee is more or less staying above your ankle, not coming forward of the ankle. You could do this with toes spun to the sides, with toes spun parallel to each other. You'll move. You'll breathe. And it's nice having blocks or a stool or something underneath your hands because then you're not hunching your spine to get your hands down to the floor if that is something that happens for you. Wiggle your feet back to hip width apart. And lift yourself up to standing. You'll step right foot behind left foot. It might be that your foot comes way out to the side, might be pretty close to each other. You might be able to step them right next to each other with outer edges of your feet near each other. Fold, hands come to your blocks. Walk your hands towards the left. Let yourself hang in a fold. Hands come to center. Release that cross. You'll step right foot in front, left foot behind, however you want to look at it. Again, your legs might be staggered a lot. That's fine. Your legs might be pretty close to each other. So you can play around with the variations of what your blocks look like when you have your hands on the floor. You'll cross over towards your right. Walk your hands in that direction. Hang out in that fold and breathe. Back to center, unwind your legs. Wiggle your feet a little bit wider apart. Bend your knees to sink hips down for a squat. And lower yourself all the way onto your butt. Does not have to be particularly graceful. Might be, might not be. You will know, return to kneeling then. You could take that blanket or towel underneath your knees. You'll get yourself settled in on hands and knees and then cross left leg behind your right. So you might be able to wrap your legs really easily one knee behind the other. You might also take your shin. It might be more your shin that's wrapped in front. You want your feet to have enough space between them. Imagine sitting your butt back in between your feet. So if you've got to readjust that position of your legs, do it. Find the shape that makes sense for you. You'll start to take some rocks forward and back. We're exploring a little hip stretching with some movement. These don't have to be particularly big movements. They might be. You'll move with your breath. Inhale takes you forward. Exhale sinks you back. Now for some of you, you might grab a block or book or not, place it in between your feet and let yourself sit back. Or you might keep moving. Some of you might fold. You work in the variation that makes sense for your body. And that could be on your knees still. If you're seated, you'll return two hands and knees. You'll unwrap your legs, step left foot out towards the left. Take an inhale, reach left hand up towards the ceiling to twist. Exhale, sink your hips towards your right heel. Walk your hands forward as if for down dog. Release your left knee to join your right knee. You'll cross right leg behind left leg this time. And again, there might be a lot of different variations in how this looks for your body. So play around with how far forward you need to bring shin or ankle. 
doesn't have to look the way the shape I'm doing for my body does. Don't be afraid to explore. You'll move again back and forth. Inhale forward, exhale to sink hips towards heels. They don't have to come anywhere near your heels. They're just moving in that direction. You're breathing. You might bring your bottom down to a block or the floor. Might have to wiggle your feet a little further out to do that and adjust the position of your legs. Or you might again keep moving with your breath on hands and knees. And maybe you take a little fold forward, maybe you don't. You breathe. You work with where you are today. Could be different from yesterday, will definitely be different from tomorrow. And if you're sitting, you'll come forward, meet on hands and knees. You'll make your way onto your belly. Hands come underneath your forehead. Maybe you bend your knees and windshield wiper your legs side to side a few times. Let them rock. And move with your breath. Press yourself up to hands and knees. Move through a few rounds of cat-cow with your breath. Inhale to extend head and tailbone away from each other. Exhale to round your spine. You'll make your way around onto your back. Once you come onto your back, soles of your feet rest flat on the floor. You'll have a block nearby or a book arms rest near your sides palms facing up or down you can inhale to scoop your hips up away from the floor exhale to let them lower instead of just thinking about lifting your hips up you might think about reaching your shins forward as you inhale and that guides the lift and as you exhale release down Whatever makes sense for you as you lift and lower and move with your breath. Next time that you lift, I'm going to grab your block or book and slide it underneath the back of your pelvis. So you want bone on block. There's room between your low back and the floor. The block is not under your low back. You might reach your arms alongside your ears. You might wiggle your feet a little bit more towards the front of your mat. You'll definitely breathe. Now allow that block or book, whatever's beneath your hips, to take the weight of your pelvis. So you're letting your hips sink and settle against the prop that's helping support you. See if you can find a steady, even path of your breath in and out of your body. A steady flow as you rest here. As you're ready, you'll walk your feet in, lift your hips up so you can slide your block out from underneath your pelvis, and come on down to the floor. Feet as wide apart as your mat, knees drop in towards each other. You'll rock your legs and your hips side to side. Imagine reaching your left knee forward as your hips drop towards the right. Reach your right knee forward as your hips drop towards the left. So you're using just that little reach of your knee to find some length and some space on the outside of that thigh. So as right leg comes across, reach forward through right knee. As left leg comes across, reach forward through left knee. Next time you cross your legs over towards the right, you might pick up your right foot and cross right ankle on top of outer left thigh. Almost drag your right ankle along your left IT band for a moment to feel that little stretch and settle. If that feels like too much for your hips, just keep rocking. You don't have to stop. Switch to the other side. If you paused on your right side, left ankle on top of outer right thigh, or again, keep moving. Keep breathing and shift side to side. Come to center, hug knees in towards chest. Make a few rocks from side to side or circle the back of your pelvis on the floor. 
Let your legs move, let your hips move. Move your body in time with your breath. Pause and start to circle in the opposite direction. And these motions can be pretty slow and steady. And you want them to be a movement that feels good for your body. If it doesn't feel good to rock, maybe just let your feet be on the floor. Rock there, just settle down. Hug knees in towards your chest. Maybe let your head rock side to side as you rock your hips from side to side. And as you're ready, roll over onto one side and make your way up to a comfortable seat.